It shouldn't be surprising that forearms are one of my best body parts as I spent a number of years specializing in their development to the point where they even dwarf the upper arm. Biceps have no contest. So if you're looking for a similar aesthetic effect, you want some real Popeye forearms, this video will give you the secrets. Starting with the most important feature, weighted pull-up specialization. I know I'm always emphasizing this for the purpose of building your V-taper, but the same applies to forearms. Guys, I used to be known as Strap Destiny, where straps were used on almost every pulling exercise. I was completely reliant on them. Grip was one of my biggest weaknesses next to calves. And I managed to get to the point where I can now do five fat grip one arm pull ups. How do you think I got to this point? By getting strong and regular weighted pull ups, doing thousands upon thousands of repetitions over a five year time frame. You want your forearm to be close to your upper arm measurement by an inch or two less, or even equivalent, like in the case of elite arm wrestlers. Guess what? They also do this exercise. You need to make pull-ups your new religion. I am officially recruiting you. And no, lap pull-downs do not act as a good enough replacement because there's no fear of falling down. There is something primal, something that goes beyond science and words about doing an exercise where you are hanging for dear life. And what I can tell you is, if you can't hold yourself for at least one minute, I don't care how heavy you are, you have a serious problem. And it's crazy because I look at all these challenges online, win $100 if you can hang for a minute. 90% of people fail it. What if we bump it up? Two minutes. Most lifters still can't do it. This should never be a problem. And I can tell you that most calisthenics athletes can absolutely hang for three minutes and above. I can. You'll be able to do it too. And what I want to point out is that in my case, I have smaller hands. You like my calluses, by the way? Which has made pull-ups even more effective. Because everything is somewhat of a fat grip. That one inch diameter scales differently across individuals. So my weakest feature is going to be the complete open hand where I'm literally on the tips of my fingers. But if I get a normal grip in, there's somewhat of a fat component. And that in itself has done wonders. So someone like me with a documented history of having a bad grip with not large hands can hold for minutes at a time, including with one arm then there's no excuse for any of you. And that's why you need to start with the basics. And although it is true that the back is significantly stronger than your forearms, when we talk about pull-ups, weighted or not, understand that the bar is stationary and maximally stable. It is not rotating, which means you should have the best force production for your forearms. The set fails when you can't bend your arms, not that you start to slip out. So all I'm going to say is by you choosing to do a boatload of pull-ups, this weakness will automatically be corrected in many months or years from now. You don't have to think about anything else. Just get strong at pull-ups. It solves everything. And it's literally that simple. That said, you can't just do one style of pull-ups. To get to the end destination, you require variations. And right now, I'm going to share what those are for forearms. The absolute best being double over fat grip pull-ups. If you can do 90 pounds for reps on this exercise, you won't have grip issues ever again. Deadlifts won't be a problem. You're not slipping out in competition. You'll be able to do double overhand rows. Very heavy weight. You can actually dish the straps. You have to clench that much harder. And forearms might be the limiting factor for a little bit. Now, first, these will be exceptionally difficult. If you're doing 45 pounds, you might be down to body weight only. And even getting 10 reps could be tough. But the longer you do them, eventually, you can actually get very close to your peak normal weights. 
it won't be a significant difference because it's still the back that's the primary mover but now you need that extra grip strength you are squeezing your life away and i want you to have that thumb under not over otherwise it's far too easy the false grip is a cheat unless you're doing that scooping technique but depending how fat that bar is you might not be able to do so so that is an arm wrestling technique but i think it's best to get a complete squeeze and that's what opens up your hand the most so i recommend doing at least one fat grip pull up per workout if you are going to work up to three sets your first could be with the fat grips until you basically can't go any heavier then the second set you go a bit heavier without the fat grips third set drop down the weight a bit or keep it the same get some high repetitions in there done or you can end off your workout with some fat grip bodyweight pull-ups. And you can use a super wide grip to make it even more challenging. Or chin-up. Whatever it is, I don't care. If it's fat, you're good. Which leads me on to the next aspect of building your forearm flexors through pull-ups. Because that's really what we're doing here. Actually, we're building the brachialis just through the pure elbow flexion component and the brachial radialis depending on how we grab the bar but the flexors that is what you're going to feel tire out the most on pull-ups it's almost like you're trying to wrist curl your body weight just by holding on so the next best movement is going to be the rope pull-up i prefer this over towel pull-ups because that tends to be a little bit too thick and i find that the finger strength becomes a main factor similar to eagle loops whereas the rope is the perfect diameter Use the thicker one, obviously, not the, the thinnest one that you'll find at those convenience stores, but a good manila rope that CrossFitters live on. So now we're getting a better grip component. We are maximally squeezing and getting a superior flexion component. And you can rotate your wrists while you do the exercise. You know, I suppose you can do a similar thing with false grip ring pull-ups or just ring pull-ups in general which i also recommend but this is a step above and low volume will likely need to be done at the start like when i first made my video on rope climbing after five sets i had these disgusting pumps that would last for at least 30 minutes it would in a sense ruin the entire workout i wouldn't be able to do more so i might even say to end off with these rope pull-ups for the time being until you develop that resiliency because you're going to have some rope burn and it's going to be difficult to even open and close your hands like this i'm, I'm telling you it hits different like it's worse than the fat grip pull-ups but eventually you'll hit that point where the forearms catch up and now your performance is not that different compared to the other variations so when i do regular elsa pull-ups i can do 20 reps no problem with the rope about the same thing. Difference is though, my forearms are actually getting very close to failure on that last rep. Whereas with a bar, it's not that. It's literally just my back and actually a bit of core as well. But that too has thickened up. So the proximity to failure is modified, but it's still not zero and you're strong enough. So embrace the rope. It's so inexpensive and it's so fast to set up. You just loop it on top of a polar bar it's a no-brainer. So my two favorite ways are in the L-sit position, just so that I can make my body weight more challenging, as well as weighted. Yeah, don't be afraid. If you can do it on the fat grip pull-up, then you can certainly do it with the rope as well. And I'm sure Popeye would agree, as fishermen need ropes to anchor their boat. In this case, you are securing the form gains guaranteed if you actually give this not a shot and one more bonus pull of variation i personally don't do these but a lot of arm wrestlers do is half rep neutral grip pull-ups where you're just doing the top portion so you flex those wrists like this and just bang them out like that chin over the bar slight bend in your elbows you can easily do 20 30 reps a set with low rest intervals to top it off should ideally do this with a fat grip doesn't have to be though and you'll actually get a really good forearm pump. Back, not so much. It's pretty garbage for that purpose. But if you have a bit more juice left and you don't want to do full range of motion, well, this could be a good way to really finish off those forearms without doing holes. Because 
that's what I'm getting at here. You don't need to do these long hangs. If you just get strong at all these pull-up variations, the time under tension is built in with time. Time being the investment itself of pull-up specialization. You understand what I'm saying? So please do your pull-ups. And what I'm gonna talk about moving forward is the least important part of this video. Certainly helpful, but at most it's the last 30%. Now let's talk about isolation work. This is very important if getting strong at strapless compounds didn't get the job done. In this case, the smartest line of defense is isolating the forearm flexors and putting some extra emphasis on the brachioradialis, which sits on the top portion. So I'm going to talk about what I feel are the best movements, which a lot of it came directly from the arm muscle world, who do the most isolation work you can possibly imagine, and in most cases, have better forms than professional bodybuilders. Not the whole arm, but the lower. If you watch any arm wrestling competition, you will see the stats being listed, right? Many times, the form measurement is between 17 and 19 inches, either above the upper arm or equivalent size. So these athletes have freaky ratios, and it shows in their appearance. It's disproportionate, but we can learn from them, and that's what I did. So the first exercise would have to be the rope curl. Again, get a f***ing rope. Stop with the fear of judgment. Wrap it around some plates. Position it so that spacing this way. Flexing those forearms. And curl your life away. That's it. Most of the time, this is done standing. Or in the preacher station, one arm at a time. Usually half reps, but you don't have to do partials. I actually prefer full range of motion just so you standardize everything. So just like the rope pull up, we are maximally squeezing and rotating. And the trick also is to keep that wrist up. Don't let it cave downwards. If you do this, the form activation goes up and it's going to be significantly harder such that you won't have to go as heavy. So for this exercise, I think you should do slightly higher reps just to maintain that proper wrist positioning. Reps of 12 to 20 is recommended. And you can do it both arms at a time, same time or independently. But now you'd be curling this way, like a top roll kind of positioning. And in my opinion, this is superior to the often seen judo belt variant where you wrap it around your knuckles and now you get even more wrist work. To me, there's something to be said about the squeezing component of the rope. Speaking of squeezing, if you want your forearms to give out much sooner on any curl, then just use a fat grip. These are the Pepin Olympic Series. Love these bad boys because you get the knurling in there. As opposed to those rubbers, it's just higher quality, but doesn't make a difference in terms of hypertrophy. So I recommend starting with a two inch fat grip and with time you can actually work up to the three inches. Anyone who can curl even 40 pound dumbbells, doesn't seem like much, but the 40s, proper form. I recommend alternate curls, as well as just both arms at the same time. That itself will do wonders for your forms. And it doesn't even have to be in full supination. Just hammer curls with the fat grips will wreck the whole area. Because already the squeezing component is hard, but then you also gotta flex those wrists and keep it somewhat higher, especially on those hammers. So your performance drops off and it's not because of your biceps it's literally because of your forearms and when you go back to a regular grip it's going to feel pencil thin that's actually what i experienced recently by going to the gym i was surprised how light and easy it felt in my hands I was like whoa this is a joke because even my regular dumbbells are a tad bit thicker and remember we're trying to make our hands as small as possible proportional to the implement. That's the secret. And when you make this an automatic feature where fat grip work is your default, you just embrace it, get stronger over time. Eventually you hit that point 
where it's essentially all you know. A fat bar curl feels the same as a regular curl, but you'll notice a difference when you return to the thinner variant. And then you'll realize, holy sh**, my forearms blew up. And then you'll look at them and you'll be like, oh yeah, it makes sense. So when you make that transition, you have to drop at least 5 pounds off your curls, but it could even be 10. Alright, so take that weakness hit and work your way back up to what you were curling before with the fat grips. And I promise, you'll see significant differences. And the carryover is automatic anyway, so why not get more or less weight? By the way, when we talk about hammer curls, I especially recommend the pinwheel version, where you're not curling straight out in front of you this way, but rather internally rotating your arm, curling this way. That will rack your brachial radialis. And this is coincidentally how arm wrestlers have done it for a long time. Now, I like standing up one arm at a time with the other being braced on something, but that's not required. Though if that doesn't feel right for you, you can also try it in the preacher position. I know a bald only man prefers to do it in this way, but for me personally, standing up is fine and I feel it forcing me to be more mindful of my form. So the secret is that I'm maintaining that L positioning. I'm not letting it come backwards or overly raised. I'm trying to keep everything locked in. Just bend the form, minimize the shoulder flexion because the shoulder flexion component helps with the biceps, not the brachial radialis. Big difference between the two. And that's also why when we talk about easy bar curls, again, you should do this with a fat grip. I advise the drag style. So wrist flexed and keep everything tight, locked in, get that squeeze in. Wow. So you always want to think about maximally flexing the wrist, coming inwards for the bracket radialis and using a fatter implement. Those are the three factors that make any curl or compound movement more form focused. By the way, if you're already doing a lot of reverse curls, I strongly recommend doing them one arm at a time in the pinwheel style. And my favorite for this is using a chest expander because the handles rotate. Therefore, you're not having to fight your own mechanics and you can line it up perfectly without having any obstruction from the dumbbell or wrist caving. So you can purely focus on the brachial radialis and you get that peak contraction as well. Like it's absolutely perfect out of every reverse curl variation I've tried. This is the best one. Nothing feels as good as this. And you can see the activation. It's off the charts. Now, obviously the easy bar does work. It's time proven, but for some people it can cause discomfort. And I feel that your mind muscle connection has to be much better. Whereas this, everything naturally comes in. So again, it is in a sense, a pinwheel curl, but you're doing it in reverse. So getting even more of a biasing effect on those forms. Absolutely phenomenal. Finally, I talked a lot about the importance of maintaining a flexed wrist throughout most of your exercises. But what about dynamic motion, such as going from neutral to flex, AKA wrist flexion. Well, obviously if you go to failure in that way, it's the most directed exercise you can do for your forearm flexors. And the exercise we all know about is the dumbbell wrist curl. I strongly recommend this over the barbell because a barbell is restrictive in the sense that it can cause immense wrist pain. Even after one set, you might be throbbing and the next day you're going to be feeling it. Whereas a dumbbell, you can line it up perfectly for your build. Now there's a couple ways to do this. My favorite is sitting down on a bench where the leg is not parallel with the ground. This way, when my forearm is flat up against it, it's actually at a slight downwards angle as opposed to being straight 90. I feel this provides better peak contraction at the top. I also feel it less in my wrists. So when I'm doing high repetitions, I'll stay relatively upright, just flex. And if I'm going heavier, I'll actually lean my body weight all the way into it. So now my arm is fully bent and I'm just powering it through. Not much changes with the wrist motion itself, but for some reason you just feel stronger and 
That's just something I learned by mimicking arm wrestlers. I can't tell you why that's the case, but if you try it, you'll know what I mean. But when I do this, the forearm is not coming off the thigh. It stays in that exact position throughout the entire set. There's no elbow raising. There's no jerking motion. It's just bringing the wrist to a neutral or even open position, even rolling in my fingertips if I so choose to, but I found that's not necessary. And then I flex and I try to control the motion. Since the range of motion is so small, and if you go too quickly, the dumbbell will start to move side to side and that can cause some wrist pain. So you don't wanna try to overload this motion even though that's technically possible. Make it strict. This way you reach failure at a much faster rate and you can feel the forms working as opposed to the wrist bone being the limiting factor. So you can experiment with a fully squeeze grip or cup, do what's best on your joints. It's gonna vary from person to person. I mix in both, to me it doesn't make much of a difference. And also, favor a fat grip. You might as well, right? This way you're getting that isolated wrist flexion in, but you also have to clench a little bit more. And I'd argue because of the larger surface area, it is going to be superior on recovery. So I only do wrist curls with a fat grip, nothing else. And this is how our wrestlers do it as well. With their cone grips and even uh, the Country Crush, which is an old school device, you can try that out as well. Or just bring a V-bar to the gym and attach your own fat grips to it and then do your lap pull downs while flexing the wrist like this. Or you see the cable rolls flexing inwards or you just ball flex the wrist without doing any arm motion that's one of the best ways to train forearms with cables obviously there's a traditional way where the cables come in this way and you're just flexing against one arm at a time but i find this is more efficient but you could do whatever you want it doesn't matter like wrist flexion is such a basic function that it need not be overcomplicated. just pick a variation that works for you and again, going back to dumbbell, the other way is kneeling on the floor, putting your form directly on that flat bench. Power style is tight. More or less weight is open. Mix in both. You can even incorporate it as a mechanical drop set. I honestly don't care as long as you use correct form. If you do a couple of sets of these, your forearms will instantly look better. And by the way, I prefer wrist flexion as opposed to extension. I found that the progressive overload potential is extremely limited. Most guys will never even go past 15 pounds. Whereas doing it from the front, you can work up to 40, 50, even 80 pounds. Yeah, <laughs> your potential is insane in this position. Like I put up some weights, you know, and even when I'm trying to get more or less weight, it's still somewhat up there just because it's a strong position. But yeah, against the bench is obviously stricter. It'll be easier to track your form and it's standardized. Whereas when you're seated, depends how long your legs are and the height of the bench. The other way, none of that matters. So if you want to compare yourself to other people, that's always possible. I don't know why you would because it's a little accessory lift. But hey, at least you know you're doing the pure function of the forms. So as a base standard, try to get it up to at least 40 pounds. Like whatever you dumbbell curl. You should be able to wrist curl it as well as a minimum but in many cases it's going to be even higher so stop babying your forearms the cable is so much more the reason why they've been stubborn is not due to genetics or the length of your forearms you just have not been trained them the proper way because when i look at the arm wrestling world they don't seem to have trouble growing this area even those who are seemingly not blessed so think like an arm wrestler Think in terms of the naturally enhanced philosophy, emphasizing the outer extremities of the body. Get your forearms so jacked that if you do have small wrists, you won't even notice them. And actually, they're going to look even bigger by comparison. And also, if you don't have the best bicep genetics, well, you can get that form closer to it. And at least it's a manly, powerful look that never goes out of style. Your forearms can never be too big. It just looks cool. And it's functional. That's it guys, enjoy building those gorilla forearms and let me know which stubborn muscle you wanna see next.